Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, let's do the texture painting of this model. This is a monocular model which I've uh, modeled in Maya and uh, you're able to see the UV layout. I've shared the video of modeling and UV unwrapping and uh, this is the layout. I have placed the UVs in two tiles and um, I'll be exporting this model and then bringing up in the substance painter. There were a few lens models which I have not, uh, I'm not exporting it uh, for the substance painter. So in substance painter, I'll go to the file and then new and here I'm going to choose the uh, monocular to FBX file. FBX format is the format in which I've exported this file. And then uh, the resolution I'm going to put uh, to 4K. And then uh, PBR metallic roughness is the shader which I've taken. And then I've switched on UV tile workflow. And uh, uh, as I told, I have UVs in two, two tiles. So I'm working on two tile workflow here. So uh, I'll be selecting this option, preserve UV tiles per material and enable painting across tiles. Uh, in older versions, we didn't had that. If you used to paint in one tile, second tile, we would have not got the opportunity to paint. This time, you don't have that in the higher version. So I'm bringing up this file here. This is the file. You can open up the 2D layout and you could see both the tiles here. Okay. And uh, I'll be switching back to the 3D. Before going into um, texture painting, I would like to go to the texture set settings and then uh, bake the uh, mesh maps. So click that. And then uh, all that options, I'll be setting it to the default and then just to bake it. However, ID, I'm going to choose uh, mesh ID or poly group and then bake it. If you have uh, taken uh, the model into ZBrush and in ZBrush, you might have a normal map. You can load that normal map at the time of importing your file itself, like here. Okay. So here you can add that normal maps, which would have shown up now while baking. So this is the map and uh, I could generally show you the uh, passes which we have achieved okay these passes can be useful in uh, procedural texturing what we are going to do now so i'll switch it to the normal and then i'll go to the layer settings uh, before starting i have also uh, created some alpha textures here okay these textures are uh, used uh, are going to be used in this uh, texture painting right now so let me select all the png files which i have uh, created and i'm going to drag this into the shelf and then when I drag it, I need to tell what all these textures are used for. I'm going to use this texture, uh, these images as textures. Okay. So just enable all of them like that. And I'm going to import this into the current session or into the project, I can say. And then once I do that, you get all the textures here. Okay. So let's start uh, putting some base color here. So I would like to create a new solid layer. And then I'm going to switch off all of them here and uh, start painting some color. You can uh, put things in different layers if you want it. But let me choose this color to black like that. And uh, maybe I can also use the roughness and then just crank up the roughness value there. Okay. And then here I'm going to add a paint layer and I'm going to paint some color uh, at this particular button. It is blue color basically. So I've got this blue color. I'm going to use this polyfill. Uh, method and then I'm going to select the color there and then just click on that and uh, you should able to see I've got the color for that button okay so once that is done I can start adding some textures which we have uh, created there so starting with is uh, I want to place a pulsar logo on some uh, slight elevation so uh, firstly, here I want the Pulsar logo at this point. Okay, so I'll be taking a new layer. Okay, and I'm going to switch uh, everything off except height and normal. Just I'll be keeping that two options on. And uh, I'm going to select this Pulsar logo and just drop it into the height section. Okay, and uh, let's say, okay, I just want this Pulsar to be slightly metallic also. So maybe I'll try this in a different way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a new layer. And I'm going to increase the metallic value and then just make it look more glossy. And then you can just uh, add some height to that. Once that is achieved, I'm going to uh, put this into a mask. Okay. I'm going to put a mask. Uh, I can choose either of the masks, uh, black or white. I'm going to drop this into this uh, mask here. Before going into that, uh, uh, add a black mask and then go to the fill. And in fill, I'm going to add the pulsar. Okay. I should be able to see that text here in the steel. I'll go to the uh, 2D, 3D, and then 
Uh, I'll be switching off the UV wrap to none and I'm going to scale this pulsar and then put it there. And then I'm going to hold shift and then drag it to rotate it 90 degrees. And then I'm going to place that. Like that. I should be able to see that text is nicely placed and I can actually go to the height and then keep a very subtle height uh, for this. And uh, I can start playing with the color. I can start playing with the roughness. And uh, good thing is I can just go to the mode and then just in rendering, I can uh, check how this is actually turning up. You can uh, check if things are coming out correctly. Okay, so that's one place I'm expecting a logo. And on the other side also, I'm expecting the logo here at this point. So I'll go to this uh, fill, okay, this mask, add another fill there, and then add the Pulsar logo again. And then I'll be switching to 2D and 3D. And then I'm going to scale it. I will also switch off the repeat to none. And I'm going to place it there. Okay. Okay, that's how I just wanted the texture to be. I, I just switch off to the 2D, uh, 3D mode and then uh, render it again. And then see how this texture is coming. I can uh, select the layer and then uh, reduce the roughness to make it look more metallic. And I can keep checking that in the result and it should look more glossier than the previous one. Looks good at this time. So I'll switch off that. So let's add a layer here. So I'm taking a fill layer. And I'm going to switch off uh, all of this uh, features. And then I'm going to increase the height. And then I'm going to add a fill layer. Okay. So in fill layer, again, I'm going to switch uh, height there and bring up this texture there. So you should be able to see that power button. And I'm going to set that to none and then switch it to 2D, 3D and then scale it up. And then bring it where this power button is there. Okay, so I'm going to hold shift and then rotate it 90 degrees, sorry, 180 degrees. And I can just place it uh, in the center. And then I'll switch back to this mode and then uh, render it and then see how this is actually visible. If there is, uh, okay, this looks too big for me. I just wanted it to be uh, a bit smaller. And then I'm going to choose 2D, 3D and then make it smaller. Okay, so that's uh, the third de detail. And uh, we have uh, a logo on this side here. So I'll be adding a logo there. And also here also I need a logo. So I'm going to select uh, the, the Chrome layer, which is this. And in that we have several fills. So I'm going to add a fill there. Okay, and uh, in that fill, I'm going to add this Axion 2 layer and then I'm going to put it I need to switch off the repeat here it is Okay, so that's one place I am expecting a logo. Uh, very quickly, we'll just check with the render and see how this is looking. Okay, that's uh, pretty good. 
So I've got that details. It looks awesome. I'll be taking one more uh, layer. I'm going to copy this. Uh, I need to create a, sorry, create a new fill and then bring up this axion again, switch off the repeat to none and then drop it there. Okay, that's uh, one logo. I'm creating a fill layer here and then I'm going to switch off this all options. Just put height layer there and I'm going to choose uh, this circles texture there. Okay, and then I'm going to work on the uh, the options. Uh, I've just uh, adjusted them. So you can choose any of these values as per your requirement. And also you can increase the tiles for more distribution of the dots so this layer is going to be uh, masked with black and then i'm going to choose the paint layer here okay and uh, in paint i'm going to choose any of the brushes and then i'm going to paint that brushes there okay so i've masked this i just need to check this blending mode Okay, so I've changed this to multiply and that's working and select the paint and then start bringing a few of the dots. Let me select this texture. This texture is UV projected and I'm using triplanar projection and then I'm going to scale this uh, texture for the perfect placements. Okay, um, because uh, UVs were like making this cross so I'm using a triplanar projection. So I'm going to select the paint and then fix a few of the dots there. Okay, so that, that's pretty good. And then I'm going to try this on the opposite side also. So I'm going to um, take another paint layer and uh, I'm going to paint uh, this in a bit a diagonal shape. Okay, uh, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to remove a few of them, a paint few of them as per the requirement. Like that. And here uh, that should not affect my logo so I'm, I'm not touching the logo part and that adds more uh, adds more uh, space to the texture there that looks perfectly fitting there you can just uh, spend some time and then place it uh, correctly that looks good. I can switch this to a 2D mode and then have a render. Uh, the 3D mode, sorry. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, here I just wanted one more detail to be achieved. So let me uh, select these layers. And I'm going to add a new layer here above this. Okay, so that should be a new. Um, fill and I'm going to switch off everything and I'm going to crank up the height value and in that I'm going to use a paint layer and I'm going to paint till there so that gives that nice chisel okay and uh, when I'm painting this okay I just wanted this to be beveled okay I mean it should be extruded out and you can always select the layers opacity I need to switch it to the height layer 
and then you can just keep it uh, very subtle and then that gives out nice look and uh, i'm going to add another layer okay and i'm going to choose some blue color at this point and i'll be switching off everything except height and color and uh, i would uh, add a black mask make sure that this height is slightly higher and then in the black mask i would like to add a paint layer and then i would add this nice uh, background so let me render it and then see how this is actually looking so you got that text behind and then you got that embossed effect and then you have this side also that nice uh, bevel embossed um, i would also uh, add one effect here if you could see uh, i've added this right so in this particular layer i'm going to add a fill and i'm going to add a texture which is the usb texture okay and then switch this to 2d 3d mode and i need to place it uh, at this particular point i'll be selecting this layer and then just reduce the opacity of that layer just to keep it a very subtle just like uh, the usb logo very subtle okay Uh, we have uh, a logo here also again i need to do the same uh, method i'll be taking a layer but this time i'll take a fill layer which is going to have a negative bump let's see if it is negative or positive let's add a fill and then use this battery release texture switch off the repeat yeah it is here uh, that is the reason a lot of people actually uh, do is they uh, don't rotate the uvs i need to select this one and i'll be choosing this uh, dirt texture okay so i'll switch off to 3d mode okay i'll be taking this one i'll be repeating this to five and then this layer which is only height will have opacity of just five percent or maybe three percent and then a repeat of 15 Okay, let me check this with the render. You should be able to see that nice uh, little grain happening there. And the overall model. So let me choose uh, this to height and then bring up the opacity. And then keep changing the blending mode. Okay, this should be fine and I'm just reducing this bump. Uh, always I prefer to check this in the render and see how this is actually giving up in the final result. I'm taking up a new layer and I'm taking full black and then roughness. So it should be quite rough and then I'm going to add a mask. And I'm going to add a paint layer and then choose the fill and then just uh, fill that total object and then you should get this nice roughness there around the model just have a look on the render okay let, let's see this side Okay, that's uh, quite matte finished and uh, that looks good. You can check with 
different uh, camera angle and lighting conditions okay so i'll um, i'm not creating any wear and tear and all that stuff happening to this because i just wanted a product photography video so i don't want any scratches or aging effect happening to this asset so i would conclude this at this level